Hello, I am Ron Miscavige, and this is Life After Scientology. And that little blurb of music you heard there is a song called Barnum and Gumbo. And that was a song I wrote and recorded in 74 in England. Uh, if you'd like to check out that and the other tunes I did, you can go out on my website, therealronmiscavige.com. And while you're there, um, you could become a patron if you'd like to support this program. But whatever you do, please share this with other people and subscribe. So I'd, I'd like to build up the subscribers so we're getting more and more people being enlightened by these shows and the abuses of the Church of Scientology. So anyway, this morning we have a, one of my favorite guests and absolutely one of your favorite guests, simply from the compliments she gets from being on the show. Um, we've got Karen De La Courier back, and I appreciate you coming back on, Karen. Hi, my pleasure. Hi, yep. everybody. Hi, Ron. Hi. So, look at we, we're going to talk about stuff that's going on in Australia right now. So, why don't you just get right into it? Because this is uh, there's stuff going on over there with these fires that are just unbelievable. First of all, our hearts and prayers and thoughts <clears throat> are with. Australians, these, these these fires are just catastrophic, and they're being played more and more on television, uh, morning, noon, and night in the United States. I personally have donated to several charities in Australia, um, to, to, to on, on for the firemen, for the animals, for the kangaroos, for the koala bears. The fires are just devastating. I mean, they're gigantic. They yeah. just talk, talk about forest fire. They just uh, Australia is burning. Yeah. And I, I, I just want to say that our thoughts, our prayers, our feelings of empathy, and our cash <laughs> is for you. We, 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 we feel uh, what you're going through. I, I'm. I'm more or less a Californian, and we have California fires, so I know yeah. all about catastrophic fires. Yeah, and I'll so, tell you personally, I pity those little koala bears. I mean, at least the kangaroos can jump and they can get away from it, but these little koala bears, I mean, Jesus Christ, they're slow, and yes. they, they just can't move fast enough to get out of there. I, I really pity them because I'm, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover. I mean, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve on that one, I got to tell you. But anyway, continue on, Karen. Yeah, there are poignant pictures of firemen feeding koala bears with bottled water. Like the koala bears cling like little babies. Yeah, it's I know. just It's really poignant. Um, well, the Church of Scientology bought this huge property. And the property is, is kind of entry point or gateway I'm not to to a national park national forest and at the time Scientology purchases property they promised absolute um, that the easements could be that the easements could be used the bush trails that have been there for decades that there would be no problem then Scientology, who believes they are the sovereign king of the world, erected gates, barriers, and people cannot now just use the easements to get to the national parks. So a show called A Current Affair, we used to have that in the United States, A Current Affair. Right. It's in Australia. And they do these little new segments so a current affair did a, a, a real story on this and i'm going to post it right on top if you would pin the comment ron the current affair show can be right on top in comments right so what the cult say is you have to get a swipe card to even use an easement into the national, you have to use a swipe card, but they will selectively decide who they will give a swipe card to. 
Ron, I want you to chime in here and tell me, isn't this absolute classic thuggery and superiority and hierarchy where the cult sh shows its Tarzan muscles? We own the property. Yeah, yeah. We will decide whether you can go to a national park or not. Well, no, that what they're doing is to be expected of them. You, you shouldn't be surprised at that, nor am I, because their arrogance <coughs> carries over into every spec aspect of life. They feel arrogant because they think they have some type of magic technology that is going to save every man, woman, and child on this planet and make a better life for them. What happens in real life is they take your money, don't deliver what they promise, which the main thing was exterior with full perception, uh, promise you these superpowers. They have your money. Uh, if you say, well, wait a minute, this was no good. I want my money back. Good luck. I mean, it would be like trying to take a boulder and get blood out of it, okay? So what they do and practice is the exact opposite of what they say they can promise you. Excuse me. It's the exact opposite of what they actually do. Did I say that right? I think, yes, that's good. I think the most painful thing of all is they take away your own sovereignty. Yeah. You don't belong to yourself or have your own personal freedom. You belong to them. Yeah. No. There's a belongingness where you lose your own self and you become a pawn on a chessboard within the cult. Remember how, well, you're a musician, so you, you were pretty serious, but you could, you could just be shuttled, like, like, literally like a pawn on a chessboard. You could be just sent to another country, yeah. half an hour's notice. Hey, you're going there to do this job. Boom, yeah. go. Yeah. Never mind your marriage, never mind it. Oh, yeah. Hey. Well, wait a minute. This is not an unusual thing. It happens all the time. What Karen is saying, I mean, I was at Golden Air Productions where, you know, people were sent to Australia. Uh, their wife was here. Well, it doesn't matter. Fuck it. You know, just send them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just like a, a suitcase or an old yeah. uh, pair of shoes that you're going to throw in a garbage. You know. The power of the top is just infinite. And you have no power. The one thing they do is cut off any ability for you to be sovereign to your own decisions. Yep. Your own, yep, they yep. decide. Yeah, you're so right. So you can be just a puppet on somebody else's keyboard, somebody else's decision points, then the cult is for you. <laughs> at, at the bottom of this, I can tell you, I really think it's arrogance. I really do. They have this arrogant attitude because they literally feel... They, they actually feel this way. and It's not like um, maybe it's that way. No, they actually feel that they're on a mission to save every man, woman, and child on this planet. And that has been brainwashing to everybody who's on staff or any public that goes on. And uh, after a while, you actually start believing it. Well, I got to tell you, it rolls back to Hubbard. Yeah. Hubbard has uh, private confidential issues where he is saying, well, this planet is ours. Yep. And this planet will obey you. Yep. Get, get the idea that you are the boss. You own the planet. Yeah. He says this in the Class 8 tapes. And so. Anyway, on Australia, back to Australia, uh, it, it was so disheartening when the high court... See, this, this Scientology was banned in Australia for a while, and it went back and forth through the law courts. And eventually, the high court said, we can't prove that it isn't a religion. So by default, by proxy, it, it can be a religion. They didn't say, this is a religion. They just said, we can't prove the negative. Wow. And then it got, you know, and you know, <laughs> Scientology's deviousness, the one thing Scientology wants, wants is your money. Yeah. 
wants money. That's everything. And it doesn't want, what it doesn't want is to pay taxes. Yeah. It doesn't want any government to have any money that it can avoid paying in taxes. Yeah. So it wants money and it doesn't want to pay its fair share of taxes. That's the way Scientology, the greed, the greed of the cult. That's why the Time magazine cover, the cult of greed and yeah. power was so appropriate. Yeah. It wants money so that it can do things like <laughs> pay two police officers, $10,000 ex-police officers, private detectives, $10,000 a week to spy on you, Ron. Yeah, you I need know. money yeah. for that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, just, just I mean, imagine. Where does that money come from? The money comes from <clears throat> avoiding paying taxes yeah. wherever possible. Because it's run like a business. The therapy, therapeutic commands classified as a self-help group at best, yeah. minus the help. But it's a therapy, a therapy, just like you pay a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a psychoanalyst. Yeah. This is this is on that level. Yeah. Scientology, it's basically therapy, but bad therapy, harmful therapy. Yeah, it is. And what what it doesn't want to do is pay for its therapeutic, although it rakes in gobs of money on all of this. You know, I'm telling you and something. That, 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 little, that, little sta that little statement you made, what they want is money, what they don't want is to pay taxes. That, yeah. that summarizes the church. <laughs> I'm telling you. Exactly. It is. So, so we're going to make this short and snappy. Yeah, you got it wrong. <laughs> this, is, this is it. They want money. They, they only want money coming in flow, in word. Yeah. They don't want to pay out their fair share. What they don't want is to pay taxes. Now, in Australia, there was a home of someone, some kind of address with a P.O. box. And do you know that the cult made this <laughs> in the bureaucratic world? They didn't want to pay taxes in England because they said they were registered as a charity in this house. I believe it was in Adelaide. That was the given address. And this was completely just a scam beyond belief. Just a scam. Yeah. This, this, this address. And then when it all blew up, Brian Seymour, the the Australian journalist exposed all this, but it all blew up. The guy whose address was being used as the headquarters of this charity, he didn't even know his address was wow. being used. So the cult do devious, very, very criminal things to avoid paying taxes, to do money laundering, and to take in dirty money and then to use that dirty money for dirty deeds. Yep. The Man. cult is really guilty of criminal fraud, money-wise. Yeah, you're right, Karen. That's no two ways about it. Do you know something? $40 million was put through that Australian charity this year, in the last 365 days. Wow. $40 million. From from the United Kingdom, this this is like a money laundering, and and forty million a year is sort of average. It the money forty million dollars. Who who are these dupes giving the cult they're, in the United yeah, Kingdom? They're, they're, who are these dupes? They they they, they are dupes. Yeah, you're right. No, they're brainwashed. That's the problem. They're literally brainwashed. But and I listen. Everything on Google, on YouTube, yeah. on Twitter, on it. They're still suckers. Yeah. Giving yeah. their money to this criminal cult. Well, I'll tell you, I did 
a life lesson, and I said, this is the hardest thing you will ever do, and I'll tell you what it is. Admitting you were wrong. These people are in so deep, so so many tens of millions of dollars, or maybe hundreds of millions in some cases, for them to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I got fucked over, I was wrong about this. Are you kidding? They'd rather cut their throat with a straight razor than say that. To admit that they're wrong, yeah, it's the only way they could get out of that. But that that was the subject of a life lesson I did, and it is the hardest thing for people to do. You must have said to yourself at that point in your life where you thought, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. You must have thought, you know what, I've been wrong about this. I know I did. I looked in a mirror, and I said to myself one day, Jesus Christ, man, I've been conned. <laughs> at that moment, I started to go free. <laughs> It's true, though, isn't it? I wish I had. I wish I had thought of it like that. I didn't think it'd been caught. I thought this abuse <laughs> is horrific. Yeah. I didn't sign up to be abused. Yeah. I didn't sign up to run around the pool on say that on a. This, <clears throat> remember, I told you Don sent me the RPF. I then had to run around the pool twelve hours a day. Yeah. This went on for three months. And oh. it was torture, torture. Yeah. And I realized this is a group that likes to exercise torture. Yeah. I'm living in some kind of concentration camp in the RPF. This yeah. is Scientology. You see, when you lift up the curtains and look at what really goes on inside, it isn't this glossy, happy, happy magazine of people in exhilaration giving gobs of money to the cult for a trophy. Scientology. <laughs> oh boy, you lift up the curtains and look behind and you get truth. Yeah. The actuality as opposed to the glossy r fluff and froth of deception yeah. where you are bamboozled into parting with your hard earned cash. Yep. Ron, just, just to give a quick comment, I think that uh, people want, they don't want to die without being remembered. Yeah. People want some kind of memory. And I think the cult convinces them that give us millions of dollars and this is a monument and trophy to your life. Yeah. You made a difference to planet Earth. And they believe it. Yep, they do. They do, and I, you know what, Karen? I think we made our point today. Good, good, I, good. I do. I mean, I'm, I just, short empathy is good. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you you made a terrific point with those two things. They they want your money, but they don't want to pay taxes, <laughs> and they'll <laughs> lie, do any goddamn thing to get around doing that. And of course, the people who donate the money don't want to admit they're wrong, and of course, they are probably convinced. You know, if I do this, I'm going to re be remembered after I die for being a Victorian Maximus Plusimux uh, donator. <laughs> you know, I gave all the money I had in this world. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be remembered for that. Okay, good luck, man. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, this has been interesting, to say the least. And Karen, I appreciate you coming on. Is uh, hey, Anytime. This was great, man. And... Uh, Again, if you want to find out more of what I do, go to my website, therealronmiscavige.com. Uh, you'll see that I do other things, life lessons. I do story time. And um, uh, if you'd like to help in this endeavor, you can become a Patreon. But whatever you do, could you please share this and subscribe to it also? And uh, we'll do our best to keep on exposing the lies and the treachery and the abuses of Scientology. So for Karen... And myself, Ron Miscavige, I'd like to say I will see you on our next episode. Karen, thanks a lot, honey. Bye-bye, Ron. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.